All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Dr. Anita here, and welcome to uh, the Rare Disease Advocacy Lecture Presentation for uh, for the month of March. And, you know, the month of March is International Women History Month. It's also the Autoimmune, uh, Autoimmune Awareness Month. And today what I'm going to be sharing with you is information that is come uh, that I got from the Autoimmune Association. Because me as an advocate, if you you know if you ask, well, what do you do as an advocate? What I do is I research and uh, retrieve information as much as I can and then I share it. So what my part, what I do is to spread awareness about rare disease, an autoimmune uh, disease, condition, syndrome, and disorders, okay? All right, so uh, again, so thank you so much. I appreciate your presence. You are so very, um, uh, I'm just grateful for you. Then let me just say that, okay? All right, so this is the month of March is raising awareness during the March for autoimmune disease, dis disease, disorder, syndrome, and uh, condition. Now, as I stated before, you know, we all know that an autoimmune disease, what happens is, is that the body's immune system mistakenly uh, looks at various um, um tissue in, in, in our body and it attacks thinking that it's foreign, that it's a foreign body, an invader when actual when when it's when it's not. Okay. So that's what that's what autoimmune uh, disease uh, or or having an autoimmune compromised condition. Okay. Now it 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 ranges from like common autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and even uh, muscular dystrophy and Sjogren's. Okay. Those are forms of of autoimmune diseases or conditions. When I, I'm just going to say disease, so when I say condition uh, disease, please know that I'm referencing disorder condition and syndrome, okay? Now, there are rare disease, autoimmune uh, diseases as well, and that consists of uh, the my myos, um, wait, let me see, myositis, yeah, that's myositis, but also scleroderma, and that's one of the rare diseases that I primarily uh, do research for, okay, it's scleroderma. And scleroderma, as I mentioned before, is an autoimmune D disease that that you know that that where the immune system attacks the tissue in the body. Um, however, it can be localized, meaning a certain part of the body, or it can be um, not only regional certain part, but general, meaning that it can affect the organs, the lungs, uh, your esophagus, the stomach, the skin. Okay, so it can af affect these, the heart, it can affect these organs. Now it's an estimated, and I'm looking at, when I'm looking down, because I'm looking at, at my paper here, um, it's an estimated that 50 million people in the U.S. alone are living with this, uh, with these uh, conditions. And now as of this March 13th, 2023 article, that uh, study showed that it's on the rise. Um, and that's why it's so important to be aware. And I, and I understand like some people may say, well, you know, I'm not affected. None of my family is affected with autoimmune uh, disease and et cetera. So why should I concern myself? Well, one, you, it, it, it concerns you because we're part of this global community and humanity. We, you know, we care for each other. And two, you want, you know, um, Praise God, you, you you don't be affected with an autoimmune disease or or your family or loved ones, friends, whoever, um, that doesn't happen. But it's nice to be aware if you do uh, come across someone that has this condition and, and perhaps, you know, you might can share some information. Well, you know, how I listened to um, Dr. Anita's uh, uh, lecture and she said, yada, 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 or whatever, or wherever you get your information from. So we, we never want to be in a state that I don't care until it affects me. 
I mean, and so many of us, you know, truth be told, I mean, let's get real. A lot of us, that's where we're at. If it don't, if it don't affect me, if it ain't in my, my sphere of influence, then, um, then I, I'm not interested. And that is such an erroneous, uh, inhumanitarian way to uh, look at things, you know, because everything is energy and even our thought are, is energy. So in consideration, uh, that's one of those low vibing energies kind of thing anyway. All right. So about autoimmune, I just wanted to bring that out. Oh, in my shirt, it says, I'm an angel. So are you. And yes, I'm an angel. And yes, so are you. All right. So the symptoms of autoimmune diseases can vary greatly. And depending on the, it depends on the person. And it depends on what tissues are affected. That's why they're different disorder disease, you know, kind of thing. The common symptoms of autoimmune disease, and you know, if you experience them, if you know someone that speaks, I say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm starting to feel really tired lately. You know, my joints are or my joints are swelling. Um, I'm having pain because rheum again, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, an arthritis. I, itis is always inflammation and the arth the the, the that's the, the 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 bones so arthritis is, is affects the bones and the joints versus the muscle you don't have arthritis in your muscles you have arthritis in your bones and your joints maybe in your tendons i'm not sure if your ligaments i'm not sure i'm not sure about that i don't want to misquote um but you may you know skin rashes you may feel you know get rashes on your skin you know these are things that you want to check out or, or someone else that you know i'm um, experiencing them you might say hey you know hey sis hey brother you might want to go to the doctor just to get it checked out you know prevent pre prevention is always what is that an ounce of uh whatever prevention is ounce of provision is 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 more than a pound of, of cure kind of thing because you want to stop that you know if we can I do, I mentioned muscle and you can also, that includes fever. If you feel feverish and, and long-term, we're not talking about a one day fever and, and, and you, you know, you cool. You said, okay, that was one of those, that was one of those 24 hour viruses or whatever. We're talking something that may be chronic, not, not acute. Acute is something that comes and goes, you know, comes and goes, although you might want to look at that if it is acute, because acute does mean come and go, come and go. It doesn't just mean that it came and went. Acute is a come and go, come and go, come and go. And then you can kind of monitor or even have the person that you might come in contact with that you know, say, hey, you know, you want to monitor. Just write down the times that you're feeling um, muscular uh, aches and pains. Write down the times, you know, that this is happening so that you can have like a chronology and 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 be pro-informed, be informed and, and, and can be proactive. Okay, there are treatment options uh, for our, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases, and they include immunosuppressive medications, cort uh, corticosteroids, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you know, the NSAIDs over the counter. Lifestyle changes such as exercise, a healthy diet, and st stress. Stress reduction is the number one. I cannot, I cannot stress or you stress I cannot stress enough how, you know, as I said, everything is energy and within that energy is a vibration. That's, that is that, that power or that uh, activity. There we go. Thank you. That's that activity that occurs when there's a high, low, medium, neutral vibration. And when you're stressed, you know, be back in the day, uh, it used to be one of the, you know, doctors would say, oh, you're a hypochondriac, uh, you know, because you're, you, you know, you're, you're thinking these things that you have these things. And now, I mean, now today you can ask, you know, ask any healthcare professional, be it traditional, uh, um, integ uh, uh, integrative, holistic, naturopathic, you ask any health person in the healthcare uh, uh, field, what does uh, stress have to do with disease and disorder condition and syndrome. And they're going to let you know, hey, it has a lot to do with it because it's energy. Everything is energy. And we've got to really come to understand that, that, you know, the thought, you know, and what, what, what happens when you're stressed? What it is, what is going on with you that, that produces the stress? What produces the stress is the thought. What am I thinking? What, what, which way am I thinking? 
uh, about this thing. That's why, you know, um, I have, I started this, the spread the word um, thought healing movement, tap into you. And one of the sayings is it ain't the thing. It's how I look at it. It's how you look at it. So whatever, whatever way that you're looking at it, when it brings stress, then what happens is there is an automatic reaction physiologically. Your organs are going through some changes. All of your 10 vital organ systems are going through. It's going through a change. Why? Because it is the vibration. It's it, it's it's the vibration that if I if if you're if you're thinking something of a low vibration, then that that is that can produce and create dis ease, disorder in the body. Okay. So um, now they say there's no cure. I'm not one who believes that there's no cure. I, I believe there is a cure for absolutely every, every illness, cancer, whatever, under the sun. I believe there's a cure for it. I just believe that it has not been discovered yet. But because it hasn't been discovered doesn't mean it ain't happening. I mean, you know, it just means it has not been discovered. And I also believe that too, um, when we begin this thought healing process and, and monitoring and being conscious, consciously aware of our thought, we are going through a healing process. I, I, I actually, I, I know this to be true because of the vibration. There's no, there's no measure of difficulty in a miracle. There's absolutely not. A miracle is a miracle is a miracle. A healing is a healing is a healing is a healing. There is no, oh, that healing is way up there and that healing is down there. It's not. There is no, there's no measure of difficulty in, in, in a miracle. Okay. So now there, this one's saying there's no cure, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, there are, you know, until the cure is discovered, there are treatments and different types of modalities to slow down the progression. Now, there's uh, advanced diagnosis and treatment. That's through research. Now, researchers are also investigating the potential of new therapies, such as gene editing, uh, immunotherapies, and stem cell therapies. You know, stem cell therapy is a process where they remove... Um, um, they remove, um, take out, what is it? Let me see. It, let me see. Cause I don't want to misquote, but the way I understand it, stem cell therapy is when they take out, they remove your, your autoimmune system. Okay. Your cells and things. And, and you have to really be incubated, uh, uh, during this time when they remove everything, because you don't have an immune system anymore in anything. So, so if, if this, this, and I understand it, 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 well, you know, I understand it, 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 I've heard that that is a cure. Um, so, you know, now saying that there's no cure now, it really is starting to, things are starting to come about that. Okay. Uh, maybe we don't need to be saying that too much anymore. But this stem cell, and I understand you would be in the hospital cover. I'm, I'm going to say like in a big bubble so that nobody can get to you because your immune system is not, you have none. And then once they clean the immune, the cells and all that kind of stuff, T cell, B cells and all those things kind of uh, kind of stuff, then they put it back. They put your immune system back in your system where it's all clean. And that's supposed to... Um, change, you know, do a shift on what's going on in your immune system. There's also another thing, I, I don't think I have the paper, but I attended a seminar. No, I don't have it. And it's called CAR T, CAR -T um, treatment. And this one is similar to a stem cell therapy, although it, it's it's done in the in, in, in uh, outpatient. And you, uh, it's what's merely some of your T cells are extracted, are taken, drawn from you, and not a lot because you can continue to be around in the community, work, and all this kind of stuff. They take the T cells and then understand they freeze them, do some type of freezing, um, and do whatever they do with the T cells, and then they then they uh, put them back in your system, and. I read some things, um, couple, let me see, I don't remember the, the, the autoimmune uh, disease, et cetera, that it occurred, but I read a report 
where there were 15, 15 people that participated in a clinical trial study and it went through the steps, you know, stages one and two and whatever stages, you know, that you went through. And that report said that these people were cured. I don't, like I said, I don't remember the autoimmune disease that that these patients were experiencing or living with. Um, but I, I, when I read that report, I said, see, this, this is so promising. It's so promising. That's why I just so wish I, I, I'm, I'm praying for the day that, uh, that, um, medicine truly becomes, um, um, integrative, that, that it really becomes integrated because, because traditional medicine has so much value and so does natural and holistic and that, uh, um, those types of medicine modalities also has value and i just pray for the day when 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 these when these uh, groups when they partner with each other because i really believe i you know i just know i just know those cures will be coming you know like really really exponentially i really believe that i i just do from the deep in my heart to within the depth of my soul i do believe that when that partnership happens because now you have you, you have the synthetic you know the allopathic um, the traditional drugs and this and, and things like that. And then you have the natural, you start bringing out them herbs, you know, those people that understand, you know, that, 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 that is proficient and expert in what the, the, the healing, the healing that occurs with, with whatever herb kind of thing, you mix them, to, you mix them together. I, I just know. Okay. So in addition to treatments, okay. Um, to improve the diagnosis of autoimmune, doctors are now being trained. They're being trained to recognize the signs and symptoms because, you know, each, like I said, each is unique. And sometimes it may take years before a person is correctly diagnosed. Um, sometimes a person is misdiagnosed. And, and that's, you know, it's not because of negligence or anything. It's because that, because these autoimmune compromised situations are so unique, depending on the individual and the genes and you talk about the genome and the T cells and the B cells and different things like that, because we are, as, as you know, we are miraculous machinery as far as our body and our, our vital organ system and, and we're multidimensional. So yeah, so it may be kind of a little difficult um, to 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 uh, to assess to correctly assess it where it takes takes a little time. But now you know doctors are now studying more, and I have to give it to uh, Doctor Doctor Kana in in uh, Ann Arbor. He's a um, scleroderma specialist, and that man. I mean, he he travels everywhere. I mean, he he shares information, and I just say God bless him, and God bless you know all the specialists who take the time to say, okay, let me concentrate, let my field of study be be uh, concentrating uh, to on one thing, so that um there so that we can we can discover the cure for these things as opposed to a jack of all trade, you know, being that master of one. That's a beautiful thing. That's just beautiful. And as I was saying that each autoimmune, I'm just keeping track of the time, each autoimmune disease uh, is is unique and, and the manifestations and responses are different to treatment. Um, However, clinical trials, and, and I know with, uh, in the BIPOC community, you know, there's been like reserve in, in um, uh, participating in clinical trial studies. Um, however, it, it's been a lot of the clinical trial studies. That's how, that's how um, these cures and, and advanced treatments can be found. And, you know, if, you know, if all of the, if, if, if all uh, clinical trial studies were done, done mostly by, you know, by um, the European descendants, then, you know, then the African American or people of color, the BIPOC community, you know, we're kind of at a disadvantage as far as uh, the uh, professionals, medical professionals, professionals finding 
advanced treatment for us because if we're not participating, you know, that 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 clinical trial study that was done on uh, you know, on 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 a ca Caucasian person, that's not going to, that's not going to not, I can't say it's not going to, but more than likely, it's going, to, it's not going to help with a person of color because of our DNA. DNA is a different cell. You know, the genome, the, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, the, all the DNA construct. So in clinical trial studies, there, there needs to be more diversity of participants um, actively engaged and participating in these clinical trial studies. Um, this report says that the future of autoimmune disease research looks promising, and I do. I mean, with this CAR T, CAR T, so, and the CAR represents something with the CAR T, stem, stem cell, uh, even like with cancer. Now you have oral, oral uh, uh, chemotherapy. I mean, technology is really coming a long way. It really is. And that's just such a beautiful, beautiful thing. In order now, but you know, what helps also with research and all of this is awareness, is awareness that I share information, you share information to someone, we share information. You know, this is how, this is how these you know, these uh, how research can continue. It's almost like the motivation. You know, this is a motivation for public awareness is a motivation for for uh, uh, the research for research to to continue. One of the things is is where um, raising awareness that can impact would be improving medical practice related to the disease and also. Um, it will also can also remove some of the rare diseases from being orphaned. And, and that orphan, what that means is that because it's considered rare, many health, well, many, if not all health insurance companies won't recognize them. So if, if someone's, if someone's diagnosed and living, experiencing that auto, that, that, that orphaned autoimmune disease, et cetera, then their insurance company doesn't cover the medications. What are you going to do? Ten thousand, you know, a hundred thousand dollars because it's, it's classified as something that, well, you know, it's, 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 it's not really known. So it's not really known. How do, you know, it, it's almost like that, like, no trust factor. How do you, how do you become to like someone? Okay, how do you become, how do you become to be more aware of something? You put it out there in the open. How do you do that? You talk about it. You know what I mean? We talk about it. We make a presence. We make it a presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. You know what I mean? So then it gets out of the orphan category and then it gets put in, into categories where it's covered by insurance. You know, there's the hope help, I mean, Help Act and different acts that these bills that are trying to um, uh, assist with how insurance companies can profit as well, um, because that's another thing, you know, one thing as far as like finding cures and stuff, eh, you know, it's not just so we just haven't found it, um, not for lack of trying, it's, um, you know, there's another part in this thing. It's a monetary, I, I, it's a monetary issue. You know, what, what would happen with the, um, with pharmaceutical companies if, if, if these cures came about, you know, so we have to, you know, our position too is, is not to like take away from things because it ain't going to happen. I mean, you know, it's like uh, uh, a person in, in, that's ahead of a a, a, a company, a, a major company. If 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 we don't find ways where that company, where that executive, that team can still profit while doing something more natural or doing something that will will uh, holistically, organically better our community for the betterment of humankind, more than likely it's not going to happen because those dollars are going to be. So we need to, you know, we really need to be mindful of, okay, yeah, we want to do this, but now how can, how can these, how can this entity flourish as well so that they will want to be part of 
getting the cure. I hope I'm making sense. Okay, we're almost done. Okay. Another benefit, uh, well, let me see, what does this say? It increases, to be aware, increases public interest in the topic. That's what I just said. Um, it generates more attention, you know, because the more you talk about it, the more the aware, the more it comes into the public, the more the, you know, research. Is, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is, this is, this is an interest. This is something that is that is of public interest. Let's see what we can do to to help the public and the interest. And now let's okay. Now this is out in the open. Now okay, let's see. Now it's popular. There we go. Now it's popular. You know. So now that it's popular, okay. Now it's going to get the attention. It uh it, it, it the raising awareness inspires researchers, as I just said. And when this is, I like this, it generates more attention and this increased interest can result in more funding as well as more opportunities for researchers to collaborate and share and share their findings. Another benefit of raising awareness, it helps doctors understand immune disease better. Um, it's particularly important because many autoimmune are, are challenging to diagnose and symptoms and can often be mistaken by other conditions. And doctors can become more familiar with, um, with this, this disease. Oh. Further, raising awareness can help doctors stay up to date. And this is a particularly important because autoimmune diseases are complex and multifaceted and new treatments um, continually need to be developed. They continually need, because earlier when I said, they said the autoimmune immune disease community is rising. So we need to be up to date on the, the treatments and uh, what, you know, what type of formula, you know, cocktail or whatever that needs to be developed in, in order to help people with autoimmune diseases, et cetera. Finally, raising awareness also reduced the stigma, the stigma. I, you know, personally, I know someone who, you know, doesn't want, you know, people to, you know, uh, anyone to know different things and, and maybe for fear of being embarrassed. And there's absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, you know, before it was almost like before, like with, with, um, if you were a, a substance abuser, that was a secret. Mental health, nobody went, oh, no, I, mean, you, you, uh, I don't want to get, especially, you know, in, in, in certain communities. No, you don't go, I'm not going to tell nobody I'm seeing a, a therapist. That's, you know, oh, oh ooh, Lord. See, these things because of stigmas and we need to get rid of it. And main one thing of these stigmas, what we need to do, I'm going back to this thought thing, is we got to stop, you know, being, I mean, it's okay to, you know, we all are concerned about what, what people think of us, you know, personally and say, I don't care what nobody thinks. I, I don't believe it because it, because you live in the society. You live in the community. So of course, but it depends on the degree. We don't have to be so out there, so, so you know, so uh, out there that we care so much about what other people think that 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 we harm ourselves emotionally, sp spiritually, psychologically, uh, physically. We harm ourselves because we're so concerned about what someone says. My thing is, if I'm so concerned concerned about what someone says because I think they're going to judge me. They don't need to be in my sphere of influence in the first place. Because if you guys, if I got some scorekeepers in, in, in around me and they score keeping kind of like catty and all that kind of stuff and, and not being positive, you don't need to be, you don't need to be hanging with them anyway. So, you know, that's another thing. It ain't the thing. It's how you look at it. It's like, okay, instead of me looking at, oh, I'm so, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to show this or I don't want to show that because I, I, I don't want people to judge me. Well, then them people need to be out of your life. They don't need to be in your, they don't need to be. And, and, and we need to think of ourselves and love ourselves enough to say, you know what? They don't, I don't even want them in my life. Now, that kind of person, who cares what they think? Because that's a scorekeeper. And who cares what a scorekeeper thinks? Okay? That's just a thought. You know, um, as you can tell, that kind of, uh, I'm kind of sensitive to that kind of thing. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Raising awareness helps reduce the stigma because many people have reported feeling isolated and misunderstood. And this can lead to significant emotional and psychological distress. And not in, like I said, not only emotional and psychological, 
physiological stress, spiritual stress, your faith is being questioned, why me, you know, what God is doing and all this kind of stuff, especially the things that we have been taught. Some of us have been taught how God is a punishing God and this and that and all that and other kind of thing. And then we start saying, okay, I'm being punished for something, which is, I mean, you know, okay. Um, but we need to get past all this, you know, these traditional, these that, oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna move on because I can go into that real quick. Okay. Um, by doing that, you know, by by helping to reduce the stigma, stigma, we can help create a more supportive and safe environment for, for people that are experiencing and living with autoimmune uh, disease, uh, disease, et cetera, okay? We can do that, you know, we can do that. I think it's our duty to do that as because we're all, it's one energy, one love, and we are all connected with each other. We're all connected with each other. And whether we realize it or not, when one rise, we rise. When one fall, we fall one way or another. We are affected, whether we realize it or not. I'm talking about the wars uh, 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 that's going on. We are affected. That's just, we are, because it is energy. It is vibration. And, and it, nothing is singular or separate. Cause it's not a dual thing. It's 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 you know it's not. A, it may be a polarity, polarity, but that's different from dual. Dual is separate, and we're not separate. We we are in, we are connected with each other. All right. Um, during the Autoimmune Awareness Month and beyond, and beyond, everyone can play a role in raising awareness. Small actions such as, you know, information on social media, like I'm doing. This is going to go on YouTube, and I'm going to share it with my social media. And, and those who watch it, please, if you watch this, um, yeah, because I want to, I want to grow my YouTube channel, y'all. So my subscribers. So if you watch this and this serves you well, and you say, okay, you, you know. Um, I, I can give her a play. You know, I appreciate it. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, you can I have conversations with family and friends, hold a fundraiser, and also um this one here is saying that you can share the autoimmune association social media content. And I went on there and and I'm going to um I'm I'm gonna see what the uh, with the membership, if they have a membership, because it's difficult. Sometimes it's difficult finding information about scleroderma, Sjogren, um, multiple sclerosis, um, uh, autoimmune dis disease. One thing I did rec one thing I did when I researched a long time, and then that other one, sarcoidosis. Uh, one thing I did recognize, I saw there was a common thread. All of the autoimmune diseases that I uh, research and everything, every single last one of them was vitamin D deficiency. So that's something that you guys, you know, um, you know, be mindful of when you go get your physical and all this kind of stuff, you get blood work, check that. I'm sure your doctor's doing it anyway. Check that vitamin D because that vitamin D is something awesome. And I thought vitamin D came from the sun. It does not. What happens is, is when we're in the sun, the sun doesn't give us vitamin D. The vitamin D is already in us. And when, when the sun comes, that's why I drink that sun water. When that sun comes, when we're in the sun, it activates the vitamin D that's inside of us that I, I, um, that I learned. And all this time, I thought the sun gave us vitamin D. And speaking of sun water, yeah, just, <coughs> just getting um, glass, a blue glass, cobalt jars, filling it up with tap water, putting it out in the sun, um, I put mine I put mine in the sun for 24 hours, different things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can really tell the difference. You know, sometimes I experience uh, pain in the low back. And I know what that is. It's emotional and also physical, but it's 80% emotional, 20% physical. And I know what it's 80% emotional. I uh, ain't no shame in my game. You know, hey, I'm going to tell myself the truth because I want to get better. Well, you know, I swallow that pill. Okay. All right. So yeah, so that you can do, you can do that. Now, one thing I did want to share just really quickly, I met, where's that? I was, I had the opportunity and the blessing to share spoken word at an event. I want to thank you, Tiana Myers and life enthusiast, Joan Stephanie, for the opportunity, the blessing to share my spoken word. While I was there, I met a beautiful sister and this sister, she invented, she is a strandologist. She invented that word. She's been on TV. She's helped so many. She said she's helped maybe 200 people. What she does and her work, she showed, she, she showed me one of her works. She is 
excellent. What she does is she creates um, cranial prosthes uh, prosthesis, prosthetics for people, you know, AKA wig, but you have to use that word, um, those words, if you go through your insurance company, because uh, the insurance company will pay some or all. Well, anyway, I want to share her, I want to share her information with you. Anyone who is experiencing uh, hair loss, alopecia, et cetera, um, thinning or, or, or actual hair loss, you really want to call her. Her, uh, her name is Ms. Reese. She's a strandologist. Her email is Reese. King at yahoo.com. That is R E E C Y K I N G at yahoo.com. Her telephone number is area code 313 790 7679. That's 313 790 7679. And if you call her, please, you know, just let her know that uh, uh, Anita. Um, uh, shared her information and you can just say, remember, she was the one that did the spoken word at the Motivation in Motion uh, event. All right. Okay. All right. So that is for today. I, um, I hope you enjoyed this and not only, well, enjoy, maybe that's, well, yeah, enjoy. I mean, I hope you enjoyed me. And, and also I hope this information served you well. And also if you have any, uh, uh, any, um, information that you can share with me that I can share with others, or if you have questions that, um, uh, that you have, please call me at, um, 313-605-8220, or you can email me and that's tap into you at gmail.com. That's T A P the letter N the number two, Y-O-U at um, gmail.com, okay? So that's T-A-P, the letter N, the number two, Y-O-U at gmail.com. If I don't have the answer, I'm certainly willing to go to do some research to see if I can find the answer for you, okay? All right, so let's wrap this up. We know that the journey in self-recovery is absolutely beautiful, and I hope you know so beautiful, both he and she, so are you, all right? So we're just gonna tap... To, uh, tap into you, touch into that trust that you're human and divine. And within your imperfection, absolutely rest perfection with all of us, okay? All right, blessings, peace, and love. And until next month, rare disease uh, advocacy lecture number 17, I hope that your day, your week, your month is beautiful as well as your second, your minute, and your hour. All right. Blessings. Love you.